Joining me for Primetime Local News is Kim Crockett. How are you today? I'm very good, Shelby. Yourself? I'm very good. So I wanted to start off with the B. Fisher Home Improvement 50-50 raffle and how you had a recent winner. How is this raffle helping residents in the community? Well, obviously in a year like this where we couldn't uh, carry on with the big fundraiser we had planned to do, which was our New Year's Eve event, uh, this was something that we could do to maybe just fill some of that gap, fill a little bit of that void in the meantime. And it went really well. We had uh, our draw on December 31st, a very happy winner made off with a little over $10,000, as did uh, B. Fisher. And those funds, they're going to continue to help with the home improvement uh, work that we've been doing since about 2019. And where did the center get the idea to start up this raffle for home improvements? Well, one of the challenges that we've had over the last few years is some of our traditional funding sources have a little bit, uh, they've dried up a little bit. They've certainly gone down in the last few years and we needed to get creative and find new ways that uh, uh, B. Fisher could start addressing some of the needs that we have within our care homes. And this was one of the ideas that we had come across. Uh, we have done some 50-50 raffles and different raffles over the years. And uh, we're just finding that this might become something that we should just make uh, a regular part of what we do to just raise funds. And how has support from others been for this raffle? It's been really good. Um, the community as a whole is always so generous, even in these toughest of times, uh, we find that the community is more than willing to come out and uh, on something like this, where we ran a raffle for approximately eight weeks and uh, we're able to generate well over $20,000 in sales. Uh, I think it speaks to how much the community values uh, nonprofits such as ourselves. And how was the foundation able to do this raffle this year to avoid COVID-19? Well, this was a new experience for us, Shelby. This is the first time we've ever run a, a raffle completely online. And, um, you know, there's other organizations that have uh, done this as well. And this was our first time to uh, to venture into this area as well. And so it went uh, it went very well. We worked with, um, with a service provider uh, based in Saskatchewan. They walked us through what we needed to do. And... Uh, by the time it's all done, we were able to have a website up and running and just uh, most of our work really was directing people to the website and creating awareness for where the funds were gonna be going. And with, this, with such a successful raffle this year, you're hoping to have it annually from now on? I think it's gonna be something we're certainly gonna put some uh, thought into. I think some of it is depending, Shelby, on just uh, in this era of COVID is what, uh, what, what can we uh, offer in terms of fundraisers and events that are meaningful to the community? Uh, we had such a good uh, turnout and response to the New Year's Eve fundraiser we did at the end of 2019. We dearly want to bring that one back and we're hopeful that will happen, but we may just have to wait a little bit on time to see if we can bring that one back. And the same thing with our color run as well that we've ran uh, uh, the last time was 2019 in the fall. Uh, that was one of our best events that we ever had as far as the color runs go. We'd really like to bring that one back this year as well. Well, I'm really happy to hear how successful this raffle turned out to be. And other than giving residents a great opportunity for improving their homes, what else has the center been doing? Well, uh, a lot of it is just business as usual, even within the, the challenging environment that we're in. Um, our primary mandate remains caring for individuals with developmental disabilities, and that's really what our focus remains. And so in light of uh, COVID that we're dealing with, we just have to find ways to continue to do that, but do it in a way that's appropriate and meets the requirements of both the provinces that we have to, whose rules we have to live by. And there are any other future plans that you'd like residents to know about for the foundation? Well, I think what it is, is we're just continuing to do our work to continue to care for the individuals that uh, we provide services to. And uh, we've had to get creative um, in how we do it. Our frontline staff, they are phenomenal in the way that they have provided services to these individuals and just the creativity that they use just to, and especially in the winter months, uh, you know, we're all used to be being a little bit more cooped up and inside and they're doing a fantastic job of just keeping uh, the individuals that we care for, keeping them engaged, uh, getting them out as much as appropriate and possible and just uh, bringing some relevancy to their lives. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kim. Hey, thank you so much, Shelby. It's always great to chat with you.